So as you know, Goldman Sachs is one of our platinum members, is one of the, the um, you know, most active contributors uh, to the foundation. Um, Sarhan, before we get started, I, I heard you have a, you know, you had an interesting day today. Um, can you tell us a, a bit more about what were you doing, um, you know, in New York City at the Can Can Chancellor Schools? Sure, yeah. Um, well, firstly, thank you for having me here. Um, you know? I love the fireplace. It's, <laughs> it, remind, it reminds me of the holidays. It's very Christmassy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this morning, uh, so this week is um, Computer Science Education Week. And um, I had the opportunity to participate in an Hour of Code event at a public school in New York. Um, so we had uh, Marco Argenti, our CIO, um, and Belinda, who runs our engineering communications. Um, we had uh, Fred Wilson from ABC, as well as um, we had the Chancellor of New York Schools, um, David, out there too. And it was actually a really, really exciting event. Um, the high school, the class we were in, the high school uh, kids we were with, they, were, they took a, a robot and they were able to program it in like 20 minutes and you know, have it like chase down a maze and stuff. And it was just amazing to me to see how far like introductory education has come in computer science. Like when I, when I started, I was basically on a green screen CRT with, yeah. uh, with a five and a quarter inch floppy disk writing logo <laughs> to start with. And you know, it, it's cool to see that we've transitioned so far in such a short amount of time. That's fascinating. I think the, the aspect of talent is one that we touched on so much today. So I'm, I'm so glad, you know, as a, as a European, I don't think we do nearly enough in Europe to, to grow talent. So I'm, you know, always impressed here in the US. Um, since I botched your introduction, uh, uh, you, you know, as I said, Goldman Sachs is a great contributor, but you're a relatively new face uh, in our community. Mm -hmm. Do you mind telling us a little bit more what you do at Goldman? Absolutely. So um, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I work at Goldman Sachs, part of our engineering organization. Um, I run our App Foundry engineering team, which uh, the portfolio is, um, it's really focused on developer experience. And so the portfolio is um, infrastructure to build and operate APIs at the firm, um, basically anything to do with mobile applications that Goldman Sachs creates as well as our developer tooling and developer environments. So what our engineers use to write code and uh, develop and ship code. And along with that, I also had our open source um, program and um, lead the open source program office. Wow, that's uh, a lot. And, and thank you for being an amazing contributor, uh, you know, and enabling all of the contributors that, that work uh, at Goldman. So uh, on this note, um, you know, you probably have heard today about legend, but um, for those of you who are new to the community, um, you know, Goldman made major uh, buzz in, in 2020 when Legend got contributed to Finos. Um, you know, but really since then, um, you know, I've seen a growing engagement uh, across the board, not just in Finos, but really in, in many other projects in the Linux Foundation and, and even beyond many upstream projects, the importance of upstreaming. Um, can you tell us a bit more about uh, what Goldman is contributing to? Yeah, sure. So obviously, our, you know, we open source Legend in uh, 2020, a couple of years ago. Um, Legend, for those who don't know about it, is a data modeling. It's, it's a full suite of data-related products. It's for data management, data modeling. Um, it provides auto lineage, um, supports data discovery. It's a, it's a logical layer over your physical implementation of your data. So um, it, you know, it, it's kind of like an abstraction layer that you can leverage in order to model as well as manage your data. Um, it's actually based on technology that Goldman Sachs has been using in production for many, many, many years. And um, we open sourced it because we wanted to give back this, this uh, critical technology that we've been using that's given us so much value um, and enable the community to start contributing and leveraging it. Um, so Legend, um, you know, it, it's obviously the open source project, the internal version that we use. Um, they're pretty much in lockstep and sync. Um, but along with that, we've also been pretty active when it comes to engaging with other open source projects. Um, so, you know, Goldman's actually been in open source for a long, long, long time. We, I, I don't think we did a great job talking about it. Um, we open sourced what was called GS Collections. It's now Eclipse Collections for Java. Um, we have this project called GS Quant, which um, is a Python library for doing financial calculations. 
And uh, we have other projects like Relidomo, that's the kind of like an ORM and some other stuff out there. Um, along with Legend, we also um, contributed and open sourced a project called Catch It, which is a security scanner. And I think this happened like sometime last year, I believe. Yep. It took a little longer than we anticipated, but I think we managed to get it over the line. Um, so these are projects we've been contributing to Finos, uh, working with Finos as part of Finos in the, in the FinTech space. But we're also active contributors to a whole bunch of other projects. Um, we, uh, we've been contributing to Trino, um, to NixOS, um, to Kong. There's a bunch of other things that we're contributing to. And we're making it, I think the focus of me and my team is really making it easier um, for our engineers to contribute to these projects, to treat them as um, just at, no different than any internal code base that they might operate with. I think that's kind of the vision we're trying to achieve. That's so interesting. I mean, uh, I remember when we started five years ago, uh, this was a very different landscape in terms of upstream contributions. Actually, you mentioned the Eclipse Collections. I, Donald might be here, Don Rob. Uh, which I think was the original uh, contributor. But um, I mean, uh, so we talked about today a lot about both the, the development, the technology value, uh, as well as the business value of open source and, and just, you know, more broadly, the value of open collaboration as an industry. Um, I'd love for you to tell us your thoughts and, and just about, you know, what. Uh, sort of a large and sort of traditionally conservative firm, uh, um, you know, has undergone massive transformation in, in the last years, uh, you know, on both sides of this equation. So maybe let's start from the sort of developer side. What, what, what's the developer value of, of engaging in open source? Yeah, so actually let me tell you an, a personal anecdote to get started here. Right. Um, so prior to Goldman Sachs, I was working at a big technology company and um, we were doing, a, it was engaged with a lot of open source because it was part of the product strategy that we had um, decided on, you know, open source first and um, engage customers through that channel. And so when I told uh, my peers that, okay, I'm moving on to Goldman Source, uh, uh, moving on to Goldman, to Goldman Sachs, the, one of the first questions I used to get was, uh, but banks don't do open source, so what are you going to do? <laughs> um, and so, you know, that, that, was, that, was, that was a question that was top of mind for me. And so uh, when I did join Goldman Sachs, that was kind of the first things I started exploring, you know, is, are we actually using open source here? What, well, you know, what's the, what's the presence here? Um, and I was actually very pleasantly surprised to, you know, first of all, learn about all the contributions we've been making. Um, I got engaged with Finos actually for the first time and met Gap for the first time through the whole legend open sourcing process itself. Um, but um, I, I think as, as we were, as I was exploring, it was pretty clear to me like Goldman Sachs actually runs on open source. Like we use 50,000 plus open source packages. Um, you know, we are contributing. We just don't talk about it as much. We're members of a whole bunch of foundations, um, Linux Foundation obviously, but even Linux, Linux Foundation, um, Finos, CNCF, um, the GraphQL Foundation, um, OpenSSF, Open Green Sky, there's a whole bunch of things that we were part of as well and we are actively contributing. So it's really awesome for me to see that. Um, and so from a developer value perspective, really what we're trying to enable is, um, you know, Goldman Sachs ultimately is a bank, it's, a reg it's, it's an unregulated industry. So there is always some friction when it comes to building software. Um, or open source or not. And so the focus really is like, how can we, um, how can we reduce this? Um, but how can we also enable innovation for our engineers um, in a safe, secure manner while also complying with all the rules and regulations that we comply with? And um, that, that's really what the focus has been from a developer experience and developer value perspective. It's um, enabling our engineers to uh, to engage with open source, both from a contribution as well as from a consumption perspective, but at the same time comply with uh, you know the, the regulations we have to from an industry perspective. Well, I I, I spent my whole life in developer experience. I, I actually really never coded myself. I was more of a release manager, always enabling and enjoying you know, other people to be successful uh, uh, in, in developing. And so, like, this is really music to my heart. Um, but, you know, we, we know that a lot of the technical investments in this industry are really sort of 
underpinning at sort of a very concrete and expected, you know, short-term ROI from a business perspective. So I'd be interested as one of the firms that's really engaging strategically with open source, um, you know, what a firm like yours sees, you know, open source enabling in terms of your core business. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it's, we use, we use open source, we're actually using it as a foundation for quite a few things that we're leveraging. So I'll give you an example from the space that um, I own and I operate. Our API platform is built on top of open source technology. Um, you know, whether it's Nginx or Envoy, there's open source uh, libraries and solutions that we are leveraging that we've built on top of. Um, and again, the reason is, you know, these are best of breed. These have been proven. They, they have a lot of expertise. That's, and there's many eyeballs focused on it, making sure these are the best, best in class products that you would want to leverage. Um, they, they approach the problem space differently, but again, that's great because there's, there's no one size fits all solution for every problem out there. Um, for part of our mobile platform, um, you know, we, build, we operate SDK, we provide SDKs and services for all the Goldman Sachs applications. But again, a lot of them are based on um, open source libraries that we will leverage. Um, you know, the Swift or it's Kotlin based or something. Um, foundationally, we're, we're leveraging open source and then we're adding the, the Goldman Sachs secret sauce that we would need in order to comply with uh, rules, regulations, anything that we might have to handle in that case. And what, what this really helps, the, where it really helps us is to um, accelerate time to market, but it also helps us reduce risk because we know these libraries that we're building on have been proven um, from a production expertise and usage perspective. So that, that helps from a foundational perspective. Like there's, there's an element of trust that we, can, that we can build on the right software and we can leverage the right software as we're building on top of it. Um, where, where we take these, once, we, once we've identified, so we actually go through a proper build versus buy process. We actually follow um, the working backwards process where you know, we'll figure out the jobs to be done, we'll talk to customers, We'll put together a memo and shapeify the PRFAQ or narrative. Um, and so there's a lot of thought that goes behind how we want to approach solving a problem. And as part of that, one of the decisions we make is whether we buy versus build. And the buy part could be open source software. Um, it doesn't always have to be a vendor solution. So in that case, there's a lot of thinking that goes behind foundationally what we leverage before we um, build on top of it. And we treat open source with exactly the same care. Um, Part of the uh, part of the, uh, part of adopting open source is obviously you know you don't want to just be the consumer right you want to contribute back too so as we find bugs uh, we might want features where we engage with maintainers when necessary we want to push those changes to the upstream instead of just having a, 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 a proprietary fork of that project and so we're trying to be much more engaged from a community perspective as well as drive um, open source projects across the board. Um, and then where, where that's born fruit is from, from the commercial side, um, we have offerings like our transaction banking APIs where we have customers like Stripe leveraging them, or we have our credit cards, uh, a credit card platform where we have customers like GM and other uh, card providers that are leveraging them. And these are all foundationally, if you, if you dig all the way down the stack, they're all foundationally built on proven trusted open source libraries that have been out there for a while. And you know, they, they're powering these uh, these large complex workloads for us. I, I am so excited to see the whole arc of you know going from developers to literally services that run in production and run some of the you know largest businesses and, and uh, customer you know deliver value to your customers. I I think two years ago, maybe three years ago, we were here on stage with uh, Neil Pawar, who used to be the, the CTO at AQR at that time. And you talked about build versus buy, and it started suggesting that, you know, we're sort of moving past this old notion of build versus buy, more towards like a leverage versus invent. You know, if you put, you know, uh, open source in the, mixture, in the mix, then that becomes another way of acquiring versus having to invent novel technology uh, instead of the secret sauce. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Now maybe a little bit of a shameless plug here, but um, we, we talked uh, a lot today uh, about you know, the value of open source, both on the business and on the developer side, but you know, what about foundations? I mean, we heard this morning from Sarah Chips uh, at LinkedIn, um, another 
pretty good shameless plug for finance. But um, uh, you guys have been a founding member and a platinum member, of course, of Finos. And as you said, you're involved in so many other foundations uh, in the LF. Um, can you tell us a bit more what, what, what value do you see in, in being part of this foundation? Yeah, and uh, like you said, you know, we've been part of Finos since pretty much day one, yes. right? So I think it's been a it's been a great collaboration between Finos and Goldman Sachs, and we're we're really excited about it. Definitely want to keep it going. Um, I I personally represent Goldman Sachs on the GraphQL Foundation as well as uh, the, the Finos board as well. So you know, it's it's a to, to me, where, what I think foundations bring is they bring you this focused value. Um, it, it's this ecosystem and this community you get that's focused on a particular area. So take Finos, for example, right? Like the, the focus is on um, financial providers, really. And so the software that you're building is oriented towards these, these specific use cases. There's a niche. But it's a broad niche. It's a, a niche sounds tiny, but in this case, it's like, exactly. it's, like, it's like a super <laughs> broad space, which is also very critical to multiple economies on this planet. So um, what a foundation like Finos would provide is um, this kind of an ecosystem. It brings together like-minded people that are focused on the same problem. And it gives you this, this uh, opportunity to engage with the community that's actually aware of the problems you're trying to solve or the um, or the capabilities that you're expect, expecting to, to provide or build in this case. So that's definitely uh, a, 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 like a really important value that you would get being part of a foundation. Um, the other example I want to bring up is around software supply chain security. And that's, that's top of mind for a lot of um, technology professionals at this point. And it's for very good reasons. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a... It's, it's, a, it's a very critical avenue that you need to protect against. And um, starting all the way from the US government, the White House recognized this. They issued an executive uh, directive. And one of the outcomes of that was an open SSF that was founded um, a, few, a few weeks, a few months later after that. Um, Goldman Sachs joined open SSF because, again, we see the value. We see the criticality of this problem. Um, we want to participate. Um, we want to participate from both from an engagement perspective as well from an expertise perspective and help drive software supply chain security for the industry as a whole, um, obviously with a focus on finance because that's where we are. But we see being part of the foundation as a benefit for the industry as a whole because we can benefit from best practices that other firms are um, putting in place as they solve some of these problems. But we can also contribute back um, some of the learnings that we've got running um, our software within a, a regulated financial industry, industrial environment. Fascinating, and, and I'm glad you touched on, on open source security because uh, that is something that is top of mind. In fact, I'm just going to close with a quick anecdote. You mentioned uh, Goldman Sachs is a, is a member of OpenSSF. Um, I remember when my boss, Jim Zemlin, the executive director of the Linux Foundation, uh, was, was you know, fundraising for OpenSSF. He gave me a call, you know, 4 p.m. Pacific time, say, hey, do you think Goldman would like to be involved? I reached out to Marco, uh, the CIO of Goldman Sachs, literally sub 30 minutes response, uh, just again showing how not only this is a critical problem, but how. Um, you know, this industry has not pulled back on open source after, you know, Log4Shell is actually doubling down on investing, uh, not just in foundation, but really in, in yeah. consumption. Uh, Ron, this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and for all your contributions and, and for being a valued platinum member of Finas. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it was great talking with you. Thanks, man.